we're going to use the example of greetings at the front door. You've taught the dog what their search cue means. It means you can now look for food on the floor. We've taught our dogs it's your choice, which means you don't dive for food on the floor unless I give you the cue. Now we've also taught crate games and relaxation. You continue to build those up. Now let's talk about the doorbell. And for the doorbell, I recommend you use a remote feeder. So this is what it's going to look like. You've got a dog who loves the hot zone. And so they will go to the hot zone, whatever you call it. Now, hot zone should be a raised dog bed. So something that's off the ground or at the very minimum, it has to have some sort of a lip on it that they are jumping into. That creates the best barrier. Remember, we want clarity. If you have like a towel on the ground or a mat on the ground, there's no clarity because I promise you the paws are going to be off the mat. When the paws are off the mat, soon the elbows are off the mat. And before you know it, you have a dog like my girl feature. By the time she was 14, she would keep one tippy toe in the hot zone. So barriers much, much better to help create clarity of what we want. We've got a dog now, loves a hot zone. You've got a cue. Mine is hup it up. And the dog will leave from anywhere and go into their hot zone. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a sound that's maybe if you have a doorbell, you're going to use a knock and put it on your phone, either in your videos where you can access it really easy. You're going to play that and then say, hup it up very, very close to the bed now. So now that becomes a new cue. The knock becomes run to the bed. Now I want you to use something that isn't the doorbell because we want to first condition the dog to a different sound means go to the hot zone. Now we're going to get a new sound. You're just going to record your doorbell and you're going to have your dog on leash for this one, ideally on a harness because he may go lunging for the door and you're going to play the sound say, hop it up. Remember we need a learning gap in there. So the sound pause, hop it up. You're going to keep at this until from a very short distance away, like one stride away, the dog hears the sound. They're going to jump into the hot zone. Now the hot zone, you should have one very, very close to the front door. Now we have a dog that will jump in their hot zone at the sound. Now they're probably not going to do it when somebody comes to the door actually, but In the meantime, what you can do is you can change how people get into your house. So put a sign and say, doorbell broken, please knock. And if you already have people knocking on the door, maybe put a door knocker. So it changes the sound. You want to ideally change that environmental trigger for the dog while you're reconditioning what they should be doing when somebody comes to the door. All right. So now we have a dog who will go in on the doorbell alone. Here's where your remote feeder comes in. You're going to put the remote feeder so that the dog can access the reinforcement from the hot zone. So either beside it or above it where the cookies will drop in. You are going to know what's high value, moderate value, and low value reinforcement for your dog. And you're going to start only with high value. So you're going to make that sound. They're going to run to the hot zone and you're going to hit the remote for the feeder. They're going to get the yummy high value rewards. Then you're going to have a friend come over and just ring the bell. And the dog has the freedom to go to the door. If there is windows they can look through at the door and see somebody there, you need to block that access out so that if he runs to the door, nothing happens. He goes to the hot zone, he gets reinforcement. And you're going to do that again. Nobody's coming through the door. You're going to do that until he will no longer leave. The doorbell means go in your hot zone. Doorbell, go in your hot zone. Now what you're going to do is you are going to progress up to the point where you know they're coming and they're going to come in. So the person rings the bell, you deliver the reinforcement. They come in the house, you continue to deliver reinforcement via the remote. The high value reinforcement, if the dog leaves the high value reinforcement to get to the person, the person just turns their back and faces the wall and says nothing. Does not give that dog any reinforcement. The dog will go back to the bed and get, you just continue to reinforce, right? Now it's Susan, I'm going to burn through all these high value reinforcement. It's okay because now we have one good repetition. We're going to mix in some moderate value in with the high, not as much high. We're getting to a place where there's more moderate and we're going to do the same thing. When we get to a place where we put low value reinforcement in the remote feeder, I'm not saying low, like my dog won't eat it. I'm like, well, if there's nothing else, he'll eat this because what's going to happen. We're going to hit the remote, reinforce a dog, but you're going to be throwing high value reinforcement 
this is a step to fading the remote feeder. I just want bowls of food around. And at first it could be high, but then, you know, it's just moderate for my dogs now, moderate, some low mixed in there. Doorbell rings. You can just throw a handful of cookies in the hot zone. When will this not work? It won't work if you have multiple dogs and you haven't trained them individually. It also won't work if you have multiple dogs and one of them is a resource guarder that you haven't dealt with that anxiety first. So deal with one dog at a time. We have hot zones in different locations. Sometimes the dogs go to the same location and eat out of the same remote feeder if we're at that stage. No big deal because we don't have dogs that will resource guard against another dog. All right. So there's your complete protocol on how to use and fade your remote feeder and how to work through one trigger to barking. That may not be your dog's trigger, but using that protocol and the one that I mentioned before and the one I mentioned in episode number 239, I know you'll be able to come up with a way to eliminate, at the very least, minimize the amount and the intensity your dog's barking. (laughs) 